Good morning. Happy Sunday morning to everybody on this rainy day. Uh, something exciting going on here in St. Paul since we're not here. Uh, Sunday School Chapel is being uh, sanded and sealed and stained, and it's going to be beautiful when you all come home. Uh, another thing to celebrate. However, that means don't come up and try to get into the church through the ramp door. Just don't go there. Come in the front door. Um, on our prayer concerns, we've got a Jackie Less. Rosemary Ziegler and Jim Danko. And I need to remind everyone that uh, geranium orders, if you want to order geraniums for Pentecost to decorate the altar, which is uh, Pentecost is the end of May, um, those need to be in by the end of the week so that Karen can put the order in. And if you were thinking I'd do it eventually, do it now. Okay. We begin with the hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. Everybody who picked up your bulletins, it should, yeah, it's right there in your bulletin. that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the word of Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For our children who are out there, today's not a great day to do it, but this last week was Earth Day and Arbor Day. And on Earth Day and Arbor Day, those are times to be outside and thank God for the things like plants and trees. Arbor Day is about planting trees. And just look at all the beauty of nature around you. Um, and... If you're able to be outside, uh, do something like plant flowers, plant a tree. Um, do something that helps the earth. Happy Earth Day, really. Our first lesson comes from Acts. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, What shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. 
and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Here is the first reading. We will read portions of Psalm 116 responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I came upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. For you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Alleluia. Our second lesson comes from 1 Peter. Since you call on a creator who judges each one's work in part, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers and sisters, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Here is the second reading.
sin, and yet we're forgiven. The Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now at that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talk and discuss these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, and saying, It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what they had happened to them on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Creator, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We continue our study on the first letter of Peter this week. I want you to remember that this letter was written to give hope and comfort to early Christians who were facing persecution and were living in the midst of a society, of a society ignorant of the one true God. Because they were Christians, they were misunderstood and subjected to cruelty, and that was before Nero's persecution began. This letter of Peter is full of hope and encouragement. His purpose for this letter is to help Christians see that their sufferings are temporary and insignificant in the light of the coming eternal glory. In the midst of all their hardship and discouragement, God was always watching over them, and through their faith, God would give them joy even during this time of trouble. Remember last week Peter wrote, Now for a little while you have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials, which reminded me of Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church, for our lights and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory beyond all comparison. Now I know this quarantine feels like it has lasted forever, and everybody's getting antsy to get out, and this has caused many people some real hardship. So saying that it's for a little while and we have light momentary troubles sounds like making light of the situation, which is not the case. We all know, and God knows, how serious the situation is. But when you look at it in light of eternity, it's not so bad. Both Peter and Paul wrote to encourage believers who were suffering from persecution for the faith. And both of them point out that in light of our promised eternal life, what happens during our time on earth really is very brief. In our reading for today, Peter reminds believers that they are called to live a lifestyle that is different than that of the people around them 
and should constantly be calling on God our Father in prayer. These are things which will make us stand out as different. The church to whom this letter was written lived among pagans who believed in many gods, one of whom was a Roman emperor, and whose worship involved sacrifices and fertility rituals. Not participating in said rituals kind of made early Christians noticeable and the subjects of ridicule. Christians today are often the subject of ridicule. Christians are portrayed in a negative light in many TV shows, and the things we do, maybe public prayer, setting up public nativity scenes, have been mocked by those who do not know Christ. That seems to be turning around in light of some of this pandemic, but I wonder how long the upsurge of faith will last once the quarantine has been lifted. Remember how churches were full for a few weeks following 9-11? It reminds me of the nation of Israel. As long as the chosen people of God worshipped and followed God's commands faithfully, they were fine. When they turned to other gods, when they relied on their kings and their armies, when they were not sincere in worship, when they were just going through the motions, when they forgot God, disaster followed. The people of Israel would eventually realize their sin, turn back to God, God would forgive them every time, and things would be good at least until the next time the people forgot God. Our world, not just our country, our world has forgotten God. We have turned away from the one true God and worshipped other gods. We have relied on our governments, on ourselves, wealth, popularity, power. Look where it's gotten us. In the midst of a quarantine for a global pandemic. And people are turning to God. Some for the first time ever, which is wonderful. However, Peter reminds us, God, who is our loving Father, is also a judge, and judgment is certain. Simply because some people call themselves Christians does not mean all will be well for them on the day of judgment. God sees our true hearts, and while we are justified by God's grace, the fact that we are justified changes us, or it should. We are compelled to live lives pleasing to God which means following Jesus' example of caring for others and loving each other, praying continually and worshiping sincerely. Because we know judgment is coming, we live our lives in reverent awe, not afraid of what God is going to do, but in peace and thankfulness for what God has done for us. We know our time on earth is temporary, and we should use it wisely, serving God and each other. If we are not doing these things, then have we truly embraced our faith in God? Or are we just going through the motions? Peter then reminds us of what Jesus did for us, how he redeemed us with his blood as a sacrifice for our sin. It is through Jesus that we know and believe in God and are now able to put our faith and hope in God. Now, Peter says, now that you have purified yourselves, Peter is telling his readers that once you sincerely believe and are living a Christian life, that's what he means by purified, demonstrate that by loving your brothers and sisters deeply from the heart, because we know how much we are loved by God. We are commanded to love each other the way God loves us. This is how... Who declare this virus as a punishment for those who don't believe like they do. 
Kind of like the Pharisees and the Jewish leaders who crucified Jesus for showing love and concern to those who are considered outcasts. And there are folks who have never darkened the door of a church building or have been kicked out of churches for whatever reason, but live lives of love and compassion and perform acts of kindness to those in need. Who do you think is going to have an easier time when they stand before God? The ones who have demonstrated love and compassion? Or the ones who have done harm in God's name? People remind us that we are living in a world hostile to our faith. And we are to respond to that hostility by loving everyone, radically, completely, sacrificially. By this will all people know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Sound familiar? We are the forgiven, redeemed children of God. We were made God's children through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Our freedom from the power of sin and death was given to us by God's grace, by the price of Jesus' blood. And we respond to this overwhelming grace and love by loving each other, forgiving each other, being gentle with each other. When in question, I always say, always err on the side of love, because that's what Jesus did. We sing what we were baptized in Christ Jesus. We were baptized in Christ Jesus. We were baptized in his death. That is Christ was raised victorious. We might live a brand new life. And if we have been with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We must build ourselves up in our most holy faith. By praying in the Holy Spirit. We must keep ourselves in the love of God. Looking, Looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything, everything old has passed away. away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, 
things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sin. Amen. My sisters and brothers rejoice. Let us mend our ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, and live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment to say peace to one another. steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts we offer ourselves to you, and with the church through all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the gift of your Son and making us your beloved and righteous sons and daughters. Show us, Lord, how you would have us live so that we might be examples of your love on earth. Give us the hearts of forgiveness and the compassion that we need so that we can be little Christ throughout the world until that day that you take all of us home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for and lift up all those who are suffering adversely from this pandemic. We pray for all those who are sick. We pray for all those who are working to treat those who are sick, protect them from illness. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost jobs and, and their income from, this, from not being able to do their work. We pray, Lord, that resources are made available for them so that they continue to survive and that when the time comes, that they can go back and continue to support themselves. Lord, in your mercy. In your Lord, prayer. Loving God and Father, we pray for all those who are in the front lines, for doctors and nurses and therapists, policemen, firemen, those working in grocery stores, those working at the nursing homes. We ask, Lord, that you watch over all of them, that you help keep them safe, keep truckers safe on the road, help them to deliver their precious cargo wherever it's needed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those who are sick. We ask, Lord, that you touch them with your healing hand. We ask, Lord, that you watch over Anna May, Robert and Jeffrey, be with Judy, Brooke, Rachel and Greg, Charlotte, Jennifer, Jackie, Rosemary, and Jim. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, of comfort be with all those who have lost loved ones. Help them to feel your comfort. Help them to find joy and the hope and the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of presence, we pray for all those who are not able to be with us in worship. We pray especially for all those who are not able to see loved ones because of the state of the Lord. Help them to feel your closeness. We pray, Lord, for Caleb and Vi, Linda, Paul, Carol, and Libby. Watch over Helen, Janice, Roy, John, Mary Jane, and Terry. Be with Joan and Myrna, Bob and Annabelle, Wanda, Carl, Margie and Jean. Watch over Mark, Kay, Marie, Jerry and Susie, Larry, Linda, Gail and Eleanor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of protection, watch over all men and women in the service of our country all over the world. Help them to feel your presence and bring them safely home. Watch over James, John, David, Ryan and Anthony. Be with Brandon, Eli, Cullen and Brooke. Jefferson, Mallory, Mary, Josh, Ryan, and Derek. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All that we ask, all that you see that we need, grant to us, Father, in the name of him who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now as you go your way, may our loving God go with you. Ahead of you to show you the way. Above you to watch over you. Behind you to encourage you. Beside you to befriend you. And within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final hymn is Christ is Arisen. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.